The only thing I have to really say right now is hi. Uh, I've been I've been really busy uh, having two jobs and having neither of them uh, agreeing on what constant day off of the week they can have for you. And also working over 55 hours a week can be a little bit problematic when it comes to wanting to upload. I haven't uploaded in a really long time and I'm really sorry about that. But nothing's lining up uh, properly in my life and it's hard to find a spot where a Wi-Fi battle video can fall in. So they're going to come in whenever they come in. I do apologize. But I am building up a good stock for whenever I am able to battle I just have to contact somebody with a capture card and uh, we'll just get those recorded be sitting on a good stock and then as soon as I get a lot of days off I'll be able to narrate all of them the good news is I will never truly be out of content at this point going forward thanks to the bank coming out uh, it's just the issue of when I'm gonna be able to sit down and narrate it so um, this battle is actually from the same setting as the last battle in which it was the OU tournament bracket finals and uh, I figured hey you know what we will uh, we will see what's going on with this game. So this was against a, another guy that happened to be there, obviously, uh, but he's a club regular as well. And as I was mentioning in the last game, I'm not sure how long ago that was or whether I really talked about how valuable Celebi was on my team uh, during these sets of games. But a lot of people were running Rotom Wash because a lot of people were scared of Talonflame. And Rotom Wash generally does not have a response to Celebi unless it's running something silly like a move tutored signal beam or something like that. But 9 out of 10 times, it's going to get out of there and uh, it's not really going to do anything big. So it tricks, it switcher is a choice backs on me, I should say. But you know what? That's not really something I'm actually too worried about just because, hey, you know what? Choice back Celebi, I can kind of work around with that and you can see that the choice specs actually doesn't end up hurting me that much uh, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it so for now he's in here with a guts conk elder these things are terrifying because you have the uh, you have a condition that you do want on you and he plans on being in here for the long run because I do see burn orb over toxic orb meaning that he plans on being in here longer than three turns otherwise he'd probably be using a toxic orb and uh, drain punch just increases the longevity but he can't hit me with drain punch and uh, he ended up mispredicting on that turn, thinking my Selby was going to come in and take a Drain Punch or the Earthquake. Uh, but it hits my Aegis Slash, still does a lot of damage, and I'm actually taking a lot from the Iron Barbs and the Rocky Helmet as well. Uh, my item choice would be Leftovers, but they had Item Claws, and they still have Item Claws at these. So when you see me using weird items on stuff that isn't preferred, it's because I'm not allowed to have a duplicate, not because I'm trying to be weird. I promise you this, uh, I'm just not a fan of item claws, but there are a lot of good battlers there, so it's just something I kind of have to put up with. So, uh, for now, we're going to switch back into uh, my Manic trick here, just because I know an overheat is something I can definitely go for. If it wants to try to go for a T-Wave or a Gyro Ball, I'll be immune to the T-Wave. I'm blisteringly fast, but I do resist the Gyro Ball, so hopefully it's not doing too much, and it turns out it doesn't, and I'm able to just knock it out with an overheat. So, hey, Celebi gets a little bit more wiggle room in terms of what it can attack as the times 4 resistance it had in the form of Ferrothorn is now gone. So. Uh, I do not want to take a mock punch from this thing or anything of the sort, so I decide to go out into my Selby knowing that a Stone Edge, if he wants to predict it, uh, will do a lot, but honestly, he'd have to follow it up with a mock punch to knock me out, and I'm unsure as to how much a Guts boosted mock punch would be doing even to especially defensive Celebi. Uh I still got bulk, but... I'm going to stay in here and go for recovery because, hey, Conk Elder uh, doesn't really have a response to me and I can just stall until it dies to burn damage. So I recover uh, before uh, the thing is able to hit me. And then the fact that I stay in is actually just a sign that says, hey, I'm going to recover again because I'm choice. And now he's minus two. And you know what I think he's going to do? I think he's going to go for U-Turn, which is why I go directly into Infernape. This could have been a very risky play because he was definitely free to go for anything else. But... That me switching right there meant, hey, I know exactly what you're going to do on this turn, and there's not going to be much of a response you have to it, except for it to go into Conk Elder to die to burn damage, and then you get the true initiative on this turn. So you get something to respond to my Inferno. Now, when he brought in Rotom, I wasn't sure if I had seen the item at that point, or if I did, I just forgot it. But he brought it in like it was choice. So I was like, okay, I'm still going to go into Celebi because choice or not, I'm still really not that scared of it. And then I see leftovers on this turn. I forgot how it got the damage on it, but it's not something I'm too worried about. So he's end up, he's going to end up bolt switching right here. I think I ended up going for a U-turn in the first place just because, hey, you know what? I don't want to stay in. And, uh, oh no, I went for a T-Wave. I probably should have gone for a U-turn just to pop the air balloon. And I actually do want this thing to be burned, and I do have a Rotom Wash, so you know what? Hey, 
Um, Aegis Slash being paralyzed is not something that it's really scared about in the first place. If anything, it only helps it because it means it comes out of the sword form a lot later than a lot of other pokes. So definitely not the preferred thing to get status, but I'm just going to Volt Switch to pop the balloon and then I believe go out into my own Aegis Slash and we have a sword fight. These are always very interesting. I've gotten into a couple of these uh, early on in 6th gen. They don't happen as often. This is probably the last one I've gotten into, but uh, I'm at 7. And that's pretty cool. So I'm going to go for a King Shield right here, actually predicting him to go for a, a attacking move. And it turns out that he did because he uh, stayed in there and he didn't stance change, but he got paralyzed. So I could have predicted it correctly, but the paralysis actually kind of helped him out on this one because it didn't trigger my King Shield. And then on top of that, he goes for his own King Shield. I fell for that one. It was a little obvious, but hey, you know what? I'm going to go for a Shadow Sneak on this one just to get some good damage off, and I believe he ends up going for a Sword Stance. So although he's boosting, I am the faster of the two Aegis Slashes, so I can kind of play around with this and hopefully not end up, or just try to get as much damage off as I can before I end up dying. So uh, he tried to go for King Shield on that one. I'm pretty sure he could have gone for another King Shield on this turn if he wanted to, because it didn't technically count as a trigger, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, because it failed on the previous turn. But regardless, my Aegis Slash gets off probably around a good 60-70% on the opposing Aegis Slash, and I only took one hit from it the entire time up until it ended up dying, which was an Iron Head in defense. So hey. Uh, he's at plus four now. I don't really mind this fat too much, although I probably should have gone for a Volt Switch as opposed to a Hydro Pump just to save the Power Point on it because the King Shield was really obvious. But I'm going to end up going for another Hydro Pump, and I believe he ends up going for another Sword Stance right here. He is all in with the Sword Stances. He is under the firm assumption that he can take me out with a plus six Shadow Sneak. And I was kind of scared too, but hey, the Paralysis, you know what? It saves my ass right there. I don't know what the damage calc would have been on it, but I think... I think it was kind of close to full HP, if not at full HP, but uh, he ends up getting fully paralyzed and I just knock it out with full switch. So, get to go into my, my Weavile right now. It does have Fake Out and Ice Shard, so I can get a little bit of chip damage here and there, but because I did not bring a Rapid Spinner to this game, like the stupid idiot you guys know me to be, um, I have to very, I have to definitely be careful with this Weavile is ultimately what I'm trying to say. So, I end up hard switching out into my Selby because I do not want any of these Rotom shenanigans going on. And he ends up going for the Willows. That's fine. I got Natural Cure. In fact, I have the Choice Specs Giga Drain going on. So, I could knock this thing out if it decides it wants to stay in or get some serious damage off on something else that wants to switch in. Both of his Steel types are gone, meaning that whatever I drain is going to end up taking a really good amount of damage. Ends up going into his Alakazam. I'm assuming this is a Focus Sash variant, and I'm okay with this because this means I break the Sash. It means I can take it out with a Fake Out uh, or an Ice Shard on the next turn, although Fake Out and Ice Shard would have ended up breaking it anyway. Turns out he overpredicts right here again. Uh, ends up expecting my Weavile to come in. I had absolutely no reason to switch it in, to be honest. Uh, I had, with the amount of damage I had off on Rotom Wash, I'm pretty sure I could have dealt with it with just Infernape alone at that point. I hadn't had a reason to bring it out. And I do have HP Grass on my Manetric, so it was really low on my threat list. Uh, Alakazam just had to be gone uh, with as little Weavile switch-ins as possible because I did want the Ice Shard uh, for this Noivern right here. And uh, Infernape's priority cannot really deal with Noivern that reliably. So, uh, he goes out to Rotom because he doesn't want to take an Ice Shard. Uh, I end up going for the Fake Out, and now I don't have to waste a, uh, I don't know. Fake Out was definitely just the preferred thing. He's probably, you know, physically defensive and shit like that on that. So, not really something to worry about. I was thinking about that move for the longest time because I was doubting Weavile. I was like, you know what? Weavile might not be able to take it out. But Night Slash actually ended up doing the job. And uh, I'm able to clean up the game with an Ice Shard, which takes it out from full. So... Uh, Weavile with a little bit of a late game sweep there, and then that one put me up to a, I don't know, it was a weird round, I'm not going to call it weird, but it was definitely pretty interesting, where the, uh, it was, the score it, you're placing in the tournament wasn't determined by the amount of wins or losses you got, it was how many Pokemon you ended up taking out of your opponent, so if you win, naturally you got six. But if you lost, you still got points for the amount of Pokemon you knocked out on your opponent. So every time they do a tournament, it's based on point totals for how many Pokemon of your opponents you knock out. So it's really interesting in that way, and uh, it makes for some ties and whatnot. Um, it's definitely something, something new. So uh, this isn't ordinarily what I ended up wanting to upload. I had a couple of other more interesting games. I'll explain them as soon as I get the screen recorded. But... Uh, 
It's a game I had backed up on my desktop. I was like, man, when am I going to get the data to upload this? And I finally did. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, you can definitely leave me a like rating. Uh, comment, subscribe, do your thing. I feel like I haven't said that in a really long time. So I probably mangled it. Oh, my God. I, I mangled my own ending. That is uh, it's terrifying. But, yeah, uh, I'll definitely try to get some battles when I can. There's not going to be any guarantees, especially with how much I'm working these days. Uh, but, yeah. I think that's it. I've always been bad with the endings, too. So, see you guys on the next one. Bye.